I stopped your stream. Out in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out here with Shaquifla Jenkins, and we, you know what we did? We sabotaged your little stream. <laughs> as soon as you started, it was great. <laughs> I'm going to poke you with little needles. You, th you think you're going to be able to swing out in the rain? All you're going to do is scare normies. All right? You think you know better. You son of a bitch. You don't know yet. And that thing is coming for you. Mm hmm. Your little screen is glitching now. That's right. I got your number. I got your number. You don't have my number, but I've got your number. <laughs> Let's scare some normies. That's what we're here for. <laughs> you got your little umbrella, huh? You thought you could, you thought you could get away. We're saying that men have more options. How dare you? You're not getting away with that. Show you. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm Karen Carpenter, now I'm 50. Nobody wants to date me. I'm such a catch. I have a career. I've got cats. I got cat box mine. Mm -hmm. My house is paid off. But I still owe money on it. I don't know how that happened. Because I'm so great with math. I don't know anything about accounting. You got your little bookkeeper over there. Because of the patriarchy. Uh-huh. Look at your little, your little sun hat's gonna fly away. <laughs> and then I'm gonna laugh at you. Because guys like you are what make women like me so upset. Your little, your little light vest, your rain. That's your problem, buddy. That's your problem. We're having to on this rain. But we're fumbling. We're having a little bit of to see my past streams. It could be rain. It could be snow. It could be friggin' hail. We're making it happen. And today we're going to get in a good legionnaire. Get a little night. This is entertainment, sir. It is entertainment. That is what it is. So if you don't like it, then what you do is shut it off. Okay? That's what you do. <laughs> Dating coach Daniel. Anyway, it is raining, as you guys can probably surmise. There's, oh, no, no, no Karens. I'm gonna go around. <laughs> Let's get started. Guys, today's an important stream. Because today we're coming full circle. That didn't sound right on any level. <laughs> so wait. Let's see if we can get to some light. I promise you the the ju the journey and the juice is worth the squeeze. Because over here we entertain. Uh oh. Uh oh, I feel a big gust of wind. You know what I should have done? I should have brought my really, really big umbrella, but I underestimated the power of the weather. So let's let's get to it. But I want you guys to know, coming full circle. Pause. Uh, <laughs> that's a cheesy dad joke. <laughs> oh, I'm not a dad. Uh, I want you guys to know. That no, matter how, no matter how crazy it gets, no, how, no matter how stormy it gets, no matter how much you get kicked down, you got the power, man. That's good. There's a, there's a song by Stan Bush in the 80s. You got the power! You got the... <laughs> what is it? How does it go? I forget how it goes. Oh, man. It was uh, it was for the Transformers when I was a little kid. You got the power. You got the the. Oh man, I can't remember it. I know you guys are gonna look it up on YouTube now, and try to figure it out. I really can't remember. But what I'm getting at is, oh, no matter how tough it gets, no matter how dire the situation, no matter how, <laughs> you guys have the power, man. No matter how rough it gets. 
you just got to look at it at the end of the day as you've got the options, man. And I know this is somewhat difficult to understand sometimes. And sometimes you go, well, I'm struggling. I'm not winning. I put out a, a poll recently and, you know, a good 30, 40 percent of dudes were saying they're not winning, you know. But at the end of the day, man. Oh, I'm experiencing lag. Fabulous. I got to get to a better region. And by the way, guys, if weather ever gets really, really bad, then I'll just do it from home. I'll do it from the office. It doesn't matter. I'll figure it out. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We'll hijack an office if we need to. The bottom line is, I want you guys to know how how, <laughs> how fitting. How fitting. <laughs> I'm, <literally laughs> yeah, I'm literally soaked. And we're talking about perseverance over here. But in all reality, guys, you have the options. You always have, you always will. And what I mean by that is guys have the power. They have the power to make moves at any time. You know what's crazy? Is you can literally be sitting on your ass on the couch like I was. Well, you know, let's just get into it. Let's get started properly. Let's get started properly. <sighs> Legionnaires unite with the fist. Go ahead and donkey punch the like button. Finger the subscribe button. Comment in the comment section. Share this video. Share this stream. What the hell? Hit the notification bell. Do all the things that are necessary for you to be injected with life as I get demonetized. I guarantee, as soon as I shut this stream off, about eight hours later, I'll be demonetized. Then I got to go through a review process and pretty much make no money. But <laughs> it's funny, that's how YouTube operates with me because I have a very low accuracy to how my ads will perform. So I appreciate all you guys that do send in donations. I mean, geez Louise, guys. If I just do it all off of donations, I could just pretty much turn off my monetization on AdSense and just, there you go. So anyway, we'll get there. It takes time. But I want you guys to know, and you know, a lot of guys are skeptical about this one, actually, now that I think about it. A lot of guys say, and by the way, if you notice, my little live stream has new little filters because, because... I keep getting rewarded on uh, Streamlabs, which is really cool. God damn, it's windy. Jesus. My, my, my umbrella, I don't think it's strong enough to take this crap. <laughs> oh, damn. Ah. All right, let's get out. I, I thought I was going to the beach today. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, ah. <laughs> you guys are entertained, aren't you? Hit the like button. Oh, ouch. It <laughs> got hit in the head. So, wait, maybe I should get some shelter. <laughs> you can see, guys, it's, it's raining pretty hard. I wasn't even going to wear this on that today, but it was raining. But uh, we really do have the options. And I wish I had been told this when I was a teenager. For all you guys that are working towards something. You have a goal. Look at all the guys filing in. Go ahead and hit that like button. I appreciate your likes, guys. Your likes are what keep me going, to be honest. I'm going to dislike that, bro. I'm going to put you out of your misery. No, you never will, sir. Trolls, haters, you need to step up your game. You guys are weak. You can't take me down. Oh, I blew out my microphone. Sorry, guys. The FedEx guy just looked at me like I was a freaking mental patient. But that's all right. He's, he's working hard. Dude, this guy is working his ass off on a Saturday. I love this hustle, man. I'm proud of this guy. Look at this guy. How's it going, man? Dude, look at this guy. Out in the rain. He means business. That's what I'm talking about. Where are all the little ladies? Huh? <laughs> Why are you attacking us again? Oh, 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 we're just as strong as you are. When you lift 200 pounds up on the power plate, 
at 50 hertz. What is he even talking about? When you put, when you lift 200 plus pounds on power plate at 50 hertz high, which is essentially like 300 pounds, I can do the same thing you can do. No, you can't, sweetheart. No, you can't. You're really weak. And that's okay. There are girls, by the way, there's girls that lift that are pretty tough at the gym. But guys, come on. Let's just be real. The vast majority of them can't do what we can do. And by the way, what I was getting at is, after you guys distracted me with your likes, jeez! Why am I so animated today? I'm so full of energy. I got a good night's sleep last night, guys. Literally, with my other business, I've been sleeping like five hours, six at max. And dude, it was killing me, guys. It just was killing me because, you know, you're working out, you're... No, nah, man, my body was just dead. So for the past month and a half, I've been sleeping in and just recovering, repairing. Anyway, men can literally one day just get up off the couch, stretch their legs and say, you know what? I'm tired of losing. They can do this literally at any time now all the little ladies are going to complain like they do and they're going to email me oh, why do you do this guys to my legionnaires do you know how many emails i get <laughs> what is what is what the 20 per look guy guys almost never email me almost never what they do is what they'll do is they'll email me if it's you know like a crisis like if they're at their wit's end. That's what I've noticed about dudes. And I'm going to tie this all back together. Guys will email me, bro, I'm tired of all this. How do I get a traditional form? I'm tired of this. How do I get my TFW overseas? Guys will do that, right? Let's switch hands. Because I'm getting tired. No, no. Okay. Ah. Ah. <laughs> See, I told you I was going to stop your... See what guys do. This is what's intriguing about guys. Guys will uh, email me when they're having a lot of headaches. The girls will email me just because they don't like what I said. They will say, and by the way, it's a little bit different than what I'm used to because usually uh, I'm used to women in person and they're much more, uh, let's just say, polite. So they'll email me and they'll say things like, oh, so why are you doing this? I don't like your kind of like the Ke Kevin Samuel stuff. I'm I'm dead serious. Oh, or they'll say I like your stream. Can I do X Y Z? Can I get on? Right. It's like they. It's really not that big of a deal. You see what I'm saying when they hit me up. When they hit me up, it's always something trivial. Oh, oh, the rain is stopping for a moment. I'm going to jinx it. But they always, they email me about the trivial crap. The guys are like, hey, I need marketing. I need this for my marketing. I need this on how to move a, pr like they're doing big things. And the ladies are just, <laughs> I'm not criticizing you. I'm just letting you get, why am I shouting? Jeez Louise, calm down, bro. Everything's cool. I got energy. I got tons of energy. I just feel recharged. I don't know, guys. I got tons of sleep. Feeling good. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. I mic'd up at the gym. Oh, I mic'd up. Anyway, they email me. Be silly. Hold on. Uh, stupid mic. Okay, there we go. They email me these silly trivial. Everything's always trivial. Wait a minute, guys. I think, uh, uh oh, it's still, oh, it's still good. <clears throat> Don't email me this trivial crap. Now, I'm going to tie it all back together. Because really what they're trying to do is get attention. Come on, ladies, you know you are. You email me. Just nonsense. But when the guys email me, they're on point. Hey, can we collaborate? Hey, would you like to sponsor or uh, work with them? Um, would you like to set up and get a commission off my product? They're moving and they're doing things. I'm a trainer and this is what I'd like. Keep doing the great work. It's like, what am I getting at? 
the ladies love to say that they're the same as us. They love to say that they're doing things, that they're boss bees and all this. I have yet, this is just anecdotal by the way, I have yet to have one woman reach out to me and say, I've got XYZ ready for sales. Do you see what I'm saying, guys? Now, what, what am I getting at? It's a small example of how guys actually do. Men are action-oriented. That's what keeps them going. It keeps their mind at ease. It keeps them in power. Men have way more power than they think they do. They About, about 13 years ago, to this day, about 13 years ago, I was sitting on a couch in my crappy apartment with roaches, just sitting there, getting fat. My arms looked like little noodles. My mind was just kind of just all over the place. I had a crappy dead-end job, I'll never forget. My manager, he was literally, he had four children and he could not support any of them. Uh, it was sad because, now I'm not trying to bring you down depression lane, but <laughs> this guy did, he was my boss. And this guy was five foot one. And now I'm not mocking his height or anything like that, but he had long arms like an orangutan. So when he sat down, he looked tall. And he was a good looking guy, but he was so fat. He actually weighed more than me. And I'm six foot plus, a little bit, well, with shoes. Without shoes, probably six foot on the dot, a little less. Almost on the dot, guys. My my siblings measured my height. <laughs> so, anyway, what am I getting at? He always envied me. And I was doing crap. He was making more money than me, but he had an ex-wife he had to pay out. He would always try to get me to go to the bar to party with him and a bunch of these really, really fat chicks, like real big fat chicks. And it was so depressing because he would always rope, me, he would try to rope me in. And then once I actually went to the bar next door, I'm not kidding guys, there was a bar next door to the gym. And I went next door with him. By the way, I was working as a personal trainer at a gym. Those of you who don't know. And essentially, ah, my freaking, hold on a sec, guys. All right, this is enough. What we're going to do, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this to the next level. I'm going to put this stupid, stupid paraguas, this, this umbrellas away in me pocket. In me pocket, sir. Right. Just like the little Aussies. So I'm working at this gym and essentially... I'm working for peanuts and I'm depressed and I got my fat girlfriend. Well, she wasn't even fat. She was just chunky. She wasn't like fat, fat, you know? I had a fat girlfriend before. Oh boy, she was huge. <laughs> not huge, huge, but you know what? <laughs> it's funny. To today's standards, she's not huge. <laughs> but back then, oh yeah, she was she was a big one. So <laughs> what am I getting at? I'm there at the job. I'm depressed. And getting fat. As a trainer, I was getting fat. And I'm sitting around just mulling things over. And deflated. And all these things. No, my education was crap. I'd given up on that. I gave up, guys. I gave up on everything. I let everything take control of me. I let life wash over me like a tidal wave. And I'll never forget, I was in that crappy... One bedroom, but guys, it was barely a bedroom. It was barely a bedroom and roaches and it was just disgusting. And I was still dating. That's what was crazy. I was t still dating and getting in all sorts of mischief, drinking. Nothing had, there was no control over anything. Nothing, nothing had, it, <laughs> there was no goals, nothing guys. It was a start and stop scenario. Start, stop. Start, stop. Start, give up. 13 years ago. 13 years ago. To this day. Almost to the day. 
And I was just looking around and I said, geez, Louise, this is it. And I'll never forget. Somebody took a picture of me and I saw it with my girlfriend, both depressed, just sitting there on the couch, belly hanging out, completely lifeless, just dead inside, complete bottom, just, just rock bottom, rock bottom, barely making any money. I didn't, guys, I didn't have any money to say. Everything was just bleh, mediocre. Less than mediocre, giving up. Conflict at work. That type of situation. And I'll never forget, I took a good long look around. And I had been listening to various guys out there like Tom liked his shout out to him. Godfather to many. And he had some come to Jesus moments on some of his programs I'll never forget. Where he was talking about how he looked in the mirror and he essentially said, I am where I am because of me. I'm the cause. Essentially, he was taking accountability for all the crap situation, the crap situation he was in. And so I thought about it for a long time. I'll never forget. It was a, like a Wednesday morning and I just get up and I look at myself in the mirror it was just, it was just depressing. Malnutrition. I drank a lot at that time and all these things, right? 13 years, 13 mother effing years ago. And I hadn't started anything, guys. I had no momentum. I had no, there was nothing. It was just dead. I'll never forget my manager who won the lottery. He said he won the lottery bull. He's such a liar. Anyway, <laughs> he goes, he like wrote me up for something because I had clocked in and I was working out at the same time. Something like that. I forgot to clock out. And I thought to myself, this is where I'm at. I've got an eight. I've got this crap job. I don't even, by the way, the gym that I worked there with, <laughs> this is the gym that I worked with was like my apartment. There were rats. There, I'm not making this up, guys. We had a meeting and one time a rat fell down from the ceiling and scurried away. It was the most disgusting, filthy. There were big ass roaches, water damage. It was like, I can't even t say it on YouTube, but there were gay guys in the uh, locker rooms, you know what I mean? And in the showers um, and the steam room. And I had to ro revoke a couple memberships. You know what I'm saying? I can't even say it on YouTube, but guys, this is rock. To me, it was the epitome of failure. Now, why am I letting you guys know all this? Because I'm not saying I'm better. I'm saying I built myself to be better. And deep down, I knew I was better, but I had to do something about it. There's some guys over there waving. I wonder if they're subscribers. I got a couple subs in the area, guys. <laughs> so anyway, at the peak bottom, <laughs> the peak bottom, <laughs> I was, uh-oh, uh-oh, Gen Z. Okay, we go this way. <laughs> Whenever there's Gen Z, guys, you got to go the opposite direction. Is they oh, oh, let me get in your street. I'm suffering. And it's all my own fault. And I'll never forget, he wanted me to go out to drink my manager. <sighs> and we go out once. And we're sitting with two massive whales trying to touch me and trying to hit a... I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me? I've got a fat girlfriend, chubby, whatever. She's depressed. I'm depressed. What the hell am I doing? Whew, talk about so sobering experience. And I know I'm kind of scattered all over the place about this, guys, but I'm just, I'm painting a picture for you, a depressing picture of sadness and fear. The fear of the unknown. The fear of inaction. And I'll never forget, it was also, it was also a time when the economy was crap. The economy was crap, okay, because of housing crisis, et cetera, et cetera. We had, we were just getting into, we weren't even barely just getting into it. 
And I'll never forget, at the lowest of the low, I look in the mirror and I go, you know what, buddy? Why the hell am I wearing this stupid thing if there's no rain? Let's wait till the rain comes, all right? How about that? I got a dent in my freaking head. And I thought to myself, this is depressing. And I looked in the mirror and I said, you are where you are because of yourself. You did this to yourself. You did this to your freaking self. You aren't where you are and where you aren't where you want to be because of yourself. Buddy. And I literally talked to myself out loud. Not in my head. None of that crap. But I'll never forget my toilet was falling over and the landlord didn't want to fix it or whatever. Or I was too... I was too much, I was too weak to even ask the landlord to do it. I can't remember either or, but either, either way is terrible. But then after looking in the mirror and saying that out loud, after really taking a good long look at everything, it was now time. It was now time to do something. And by the way, I remember at the end of of the lease at that apartment. The last girlfriend that I did have, because I had two girlfriends when I lived in that apartment. One a couple years earlier, and one afterwards. I'll never forget, she was very pretty. And I think I told you guys this story. But essentially, a lot of my buddies thought I shouldn't dump her and that I shouldn't leave her. But in all reality, it wasn't even worth it. She was like a LA almost eight, seven and seven and some some change. But essentially I thought about it and I thought, I am where I am because of myself. And it's time to put things into perspective. This little Latina was very confused. <laughs> she was looking all over the place when I was streaming. She's like, what the hell? This guy's streaming in this crazy ass weather, up and down. <laughs> But what I did, gentlemen, is that chick who was hot, who was my girlfriend at the time, I dumped her after I had a fat girlfriend before that. As I was all over the map, I had so, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I had a fat, a chubby girlfriend before her. Oh, God, what a, what a nightmare. It's just an amalgamation of just depression. And, and, ugh. I look in the mirror and I say, you are where you are because of yourself. I dump that chick. I dump her so fast her head spins. And then after that, there's little Gen Zers. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go to the beach and see if I can get some attention. Even though it's really windy. It's really windy. Look at that guy over there. He's getting choked by his hat. He's getting choked by the little tie on his hat. <laughs> Look at him looking right there. <sighs> My feet are soaked. Let's, let's go over here. I looked in the mirror and I said, "You are because you you are where you are because of yourself, buddy. Nobody else." And ever since that day, I took control back of my life, gentlemen. When I admitted that everything that was happening to me was my fault, I turned everything around. There was no more excuses. There was no more, there was nobody else to blame. My parents, my family, my extended family. It didn't matter what had happened to me. It was irrelevant. What was relevant was that I did not do anything about it. That I was sitting around just doing nothing. What was relevant is that I didn't put anything to action. That is where the vast majority of men are who are stuck. They are not creating action. They are on their silly phones just sitting there, scrolling around. Scroll, 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 doing nothing. Well, enjoy. Enjoy failure. Enjoy, <laughs> enjoy mediocrity. So, it's kind of sad. Because I had all this potential and I was just sitting around wasting it. So what I did was as soon as I said that in the mirror, I dumped the girlfriend who was pretty, 
It was really pretty. But she was about to approach the wall pretty soon. Hit the wall. Dumped her. Moved out of that apartment. Moved closer to school. Went back to school. Got a better job. And I started making a plan. I started to plan everything out and create action because now there was nobody else to blame. This is the power of guys. This is the power that you guys have that's literally just coursing through your veins. You don't even know you have the power of action. It doesn't matter how depressed you are. It doesn't matter how close you are to deletion, self-deletion, pressing the delete button. There's, it doesn't matter because you could turn it around at any moment, any time, right now, just sitting there doing nothing as I shout and these normies are looking at me. Who cares? You guys have that power coursing through your veins, sitting there doing whatever you're doing. You guys have that power. Now, why don't the little ladies have this? Why don't women have this? And I'm going to tie it all back together. Why come the little ladies don't have this power? Because, gentlemen, they don't know what to do. They are lost. They are not leaders. They can barely lead themselves. Well, what about her? Guys, even just pearly things has her brother managing everything. Hello? They are not leaders. That's not what they do. They have trouble creating action because they live in an anxiety loop. Now, I've gone over this before. Ladies, unfortunately, live in an anxiety loop. Their minds are not prepared for creating action. This is very difficult for them to do because they need our validation and attention to get the ball moving. Everything that we do is something that they copy. Do you see what I'm saying? They can say till they're blue in the face, the patriarchy holds them. The patriarchy is what gave them the opportunities that they have, which makes, you see how it makes no sense? They don't even know what the hell they're doing. They want us to lead and direct for a reason because they don't know what the heck they're doing. Now, it's not a slight on them. It's just how it's their behavior. It is how they are programmed. Their programming is different than ours. So when we want to do things, we just do them. And this is what I want all of you guys to know. Is that your options are greater than theirs will ever be. Because you can create at any time you want. You can get the ball rolling at any time. And they can't. You, you guys really don't even understand how much power you have. A lot of you guys don't know. Your decision-making abilities are much stronger. But you have to come to grips with reality. And your life. And where you're at. And this is why people have excuses. is because they don't know how to deal with these things. They don't know how to admit that they're wrong. They don't know how to admit that they're the reason why they're where they're at. And the good news, here's the good news. Society won't let us get off that easy. Society won't give us that out. That's the good, I know it's, I know to some guys that seems, that seems a little much, but in all reality, in all reality, it's a blessing in disguise. Because, guys, you don't want the outs that little AWs have. I know it seems like they lead a... You know, I see this all the time on the stupid Wanosphere. These guys, oh, women, women live an easy life. No, they don't. And I'm not saying you should feel sorry for them. Guys, they live a terrible life. The AWs live a very, very terrible life. And what I'm getting at is, in the beginning, sure... They got a couple options at maybe 18, 16, but they squatter those. So for they have the upper hand. Who cares? To all my 16 to 18 year old guys. So well, this these these little pigeons are very ballsy, man. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> Jeez, what the fuck? That was weird. I know a lot of you guys think that they have the upper hand. They really don't. From 16 to 18. Ooh, wow. 
they squander those opportunities immediately. And by the way, their parents don't even help them with those opportunities. So who's really in charge? Who really has the options? You do. And by the way, you get more options over time. You get more opportunities over time. It's the most amazing. Uh, guys, I wish I had known this when I was freaking 15. I wish I had known this at 20. If I had known this at 20, oh my Lord. My trajectory would have been completely different. I'm not, I'm not, make, I'm not even kidding. And that's why I spend so much time on it now. I haven't taken a day off in, pfft, I don't know, two, three months. I, I don't even know. It doesn't matter. But the bottom line is, it's, I'm that pumped. It doesn't matter how much energy these streams take. And sometimes I'm just dead. Because not only <laughs> am I walking around, but it takes a lot of energy to, you know. But anyway, the bottom line is, you guys have the power that the little ladies will never understand. They will never have this power. And it is the most incredible is it's 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 unreal because no matter what nobody can take it away from you that's the most amazing amazing understanding that you can have of yourself so it doesn't matter how much the little ladies complain it doesn't matter how much you think they're winning oh no they're not <laughs> they're losing like crazy oh my god Ooh, I, I love how guys I love how guys go, oh, women are winning because they're making a lot of money. Women have it easy. Are you, guys, are you out of your mind? To, my, to the Wanosphere, guys. What do they do with that money? They squander it. They spend it on crap they don't. They spend it on multiple cars. Whoops. They spend it on multiple cars. They spend, guys, they spend it all. And they're left with nothing. That's the vast majority of them. How the hell are they winning? <laughs> I mean, seriously, these Wanosphere guys, they really just don't understand how what, what, what's really going on. They look at the surface level, and then they start complaining. <laughs> oh, my God. It's all right, though. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. I'm here to... School all of the Wanosphere guys. The Boohoo, the Crimea River. Who cares? Who cares about Pookies and Ray Rays and Chadwick Fairbanks and Tyronius Matt? Who cares? You guys are the one with the power. Why are you here's here's my question to these guys that are so bad out of shape about the little ladies getting an upper the upper hand. Why are you so concerned with what they do? What does that have to do with you? Oh, well, I can't get them because they think they're better. Who cares? That has nothing to do with you. How does that have anything to do with what you're doing? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. <laughs> For real. What does that have to do with anything that you're doing? <laughs> so, dude, come on, man. Where is your come to Jesus moment? Where is your moment where you look in the mirror and say, hey, I am where I am because of myself. It has nothing to do with the economy. It has nothing to do with the COV, the cough. It has nothing to do with any of that stuff. And by the way, guys, the only reason I'm really going over this is because I want you guys to take complete control of your lives. I want you guys to have so much control over your life that you come back and you say, man, I'm glad I did it. Because now, I got the world by the balls. I got the friggin' world by the scrotum, by the taint. And once you... You're liberated. You're completely free. You are completely free. Because now you know that everything that is in your sphere is something that you can change. Let's say, let's say you have an insecurity, but a lot of guys have an, a height insecurity. This is just an example. Maybe you got a height insecurity. Maybe guys, you know, girls are saying, hey, you're too short. 
hey, you're not tall enough. I want a guy who's 6'5", and maybe you're 5'6", or something. Gentlemen, when you start saying, hey, my insecurity is my own problem. I'm 5'6". And you start really delving into accepting your insecurities. Guess what happens? You now have the control. No matter what anyone says, you are in control. You have now taken the power. You are now in control, and now nobody can really get to you. So what does this have to do with anything? Well, <laughs> do, you <th> do you think the little ladies have that type of control over their insecurities, gentlemen? They don't. And so what does that have to do with anything? When you are insecure, when you have these glaring points in your life that you believe control everything that you're doing, meaning make you lose. Well, it's because I was too short. That's why I couldn't get a nine. Well, I was too short and that's why I couldn't get the job. When you believe that these insecurities control your existence, this is what causes, this is your mechanism for failure for the rest of your life. But when you realize that they have nothing to do with your success or failure, all of a sudden you now have the power. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? When you realize that your height has nothing to do with it, when you realize that it's all within your sphere, your internal locus of control. The internal locus of control is my favorite, favorite, favorite thing that gets guys the power in their mind. It starts to inject you with power, the internal locus of control versus the external locus of control. Internal locus of control. I am where I am because of myself. External locus of control. This happened to me. He hurt me. It's the patriarchy. It's the weather. It's... Uh. Uh oh, I hope the stream didn't drop. Please stream didn't drop. Please, please stream didn't do it. It's the patriarchy. Ooh -hoo. It's everybody else's fault. Ooh -hoo. But there really is a patriarchy. Boo-hoo! I don't see the benefits to patriarchy. Boo-hoo! Everybody else, I'm a victim. But here's, I'm going to explain. Not only am I a victim, but I'm going to show you how I'm a victim. All the time. Oh, women are always victimized. <laughs> Is that you? Is that you? Are you a perpetual victim? Are you a professional victim? Hey, Ling Ling. Uh, hey. Little Ling Ling sounds like Cartman from, from South Park. Why am I going all the way up this hill? You guys want to see something pretty nice out? Check it out. Check it out as I get past this spider. God, that is a huge spider. That guy is huge. What's going on, spider? How you doing, buddy? Check it out, guys. It's pretty nice out. It's little palm trees. Oh, I wish it was sunny here, but it is not. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, I'm a perpetual victim. I'm a professional victim, but this is how I was victimized. You need that. To all the professional victims out there, you need that in order to stomach all the failure in your life. You have failed so much and lost so much that now you need a scapegoat. Because if you take accountability at this point in time, you're going to start crying. You cannot ha handle the emotional weight of all of your failure. It's too much. You need a scapegoat. You cannot deal. Uh-oh, uh-oh. The stream is struggling. Come on, stream. Come on, you can do it. Come on, stream, please. Get back. Where is the stream dropping? Oh, okay, wait. I think it's back. You cannot handle the weight of your own problems, of your own failures. And that's okay. But my guys, my legionnaires don't do that. They take accountability for everything, for all their problems. 
And by the way, once you do it, you're free. You are now free to win because now everything is within your control. The internal locus of control versus the external. Professional victims love blaming every... They, they, like, they like finding reasons as to why they're failing. They literally will scour the internet as to why they're losing and why their life is stinks. Well, it was fate. It was luck. It was destiny. It was everything except their own issues. This is the hardest pill for people to swallow. They cannot get the internal locus of control. This is the biggest difference between people who are perpetual losers and people who win. So, when we talk about options, when we talk about actual options, who are the biggest victims at this point in time? Who are the perpetual professional victims who cry themselves to sleep at night and blame everybody else for their problems? Well, we already know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> we know who they are. We know who they are. But we also know. Okay, my stream is stream is okay. We also know that there's some guys out there that love blaming everybody else for their problems. We got the Wanosphere guys. We got these guys in the Wanosphere complaining about how there's no good women, etc., etc. Where do I get the whammon? Well, gentlemen, again, this is within your control. The solution is the society that you are in does not produce the women that you want. The society that you are in is not the answer to your problems. The society that you're in does not believe in conservative relationships. The society you're in squashes your opportunities. Good Lord, I've almost done an hour with the stream already? Good Lord, why didn't you guys tell me I've just been rambling this whole time? I'm just <laughs> the society you're in doesn't want you to be in a conservative relationship. Is that a bell pepper on the ground? What the hell? Is there a bell pepper over here? Why would you bring a bell pepper to the beach? That's kind of strange. Maybe you're trying to cook out there or something. I think they're trying to have some sort of wedding over there. What do you guys think? Is that a wedding? What are you doing over there? Is it a little beach picnic or something? Isn't it a little bit windy and rainy out for a beach picnic? Come on, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Seems a little, a little excessive, but hey, more power to you. Anyway, <laughs> the Wettersphere guys are complaining about this. Yet, you have all the tools to go off and get the conservative relationships that you want in a society who's going to take care of it. What I'm getting at is, it's time for you, the ones that are complaining, the dudes that are complaining, to take back your control. Now, what does this have to do with having options? When you get your internal locus of control under wraps, when you say that I'm the reason for all my issues, I'm the reason I'm not further ahead, I'm the reason I'm not making things happen, all of a sudden, you now have all the opportunity you need. You start to realize, wait a minute, I can make the change, I can learn something new, I can become better, I can do all these things. You start to get all this, you start to realize, wait a minute, the reason why I'm so upset all the time is because I never dealt with my childhood issues. You start to get all this power back. The reason why I'm stuck is not because of the rest of the world. You start to realize it's all within your control. Well, what about a meteor dude and hits you in the head? Guys, why do you always come up with the exception? What is stopping you from winning? It's yourself. What is stopping you from getting to where you want to be? Where are your options? When I, when I looked in the mirror and I said it was my fault, all of a sudden, my blaming of my family, my blaming of all of the things that I had done. Now, for me, I had to catch up. 
because I realized I was so far behind because I had blamed everybody else for everything. This is just my experience, but I've seen it countless times throughout my existence. And then I realized the people that were losing, the people in my extended family who always blamed everybody else for everything, they had taught me that. And I had listened to them. You see what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, 13 freaking years later, I'm doing all the stuff that I want to do. And in fact, I started doing it immediately. I went back to school. I quit my crappy job. I left my hot girlfriend. I left her behind. Anybody who was holding me back, I just kicked them to the curb. And I started taking big ass risks. I went back to school, started a free guys. I, <laughs> I quit my job. I went to, then I, I, I went to, I went off on my own and I stayed at a studio for a while. Then I quit that. And I, cause I had all these goals that were already set up. Then I bought a business, sold that business, started another business, struggled with that business, then started another business. And it was like everything just kept lining up. And in the past 13 years, guys, I've done more than I ever thought I could ever do in my entire life before. I stopped dating all those crappy ass and stopped uh, hooking up and going to bars and, you know, essentially destroying myself. What I'm getting at is you start to realize that you have way more options than you thought you did. You start to realize that you don't have to be six foot ten. You start to realize you don't need to be a male model. You start to realize you don't need six pack abs. You start to do things for yourself and help other people around you. You start to express gratitude for the things that you have. I'm grateful just to, I know you guys may think this is silly, but I'm just grateful to have a roof over my head. I'm just great. I am just grateful that I'm able to walk here and talk to you guys. I know you guys think I'm, you, you're like, what? Yes. I, I'm grateful to have these sunglasses. My brother got me these sunglasses. Shout out to him. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I'm grateful to have this. So <laughs> I'm grateful to be breathing. And so what does this have to do with anything? Your options start to multiply when you have all this gratitude. And I realized that my family was always anxious and always ungrateful. Well, part of my family, very ungrateful, very little gratitude. They were always limited mentally because they were always looking at what they didn't have as opposed to what they did have. And so they lived, some of them, a very narrow existence, a very sad existence. They never realized that they had the power that they could. <laughs> it was like, phew, yeah, kind of depressing, huh? But also enlightening and empowering. I know that's stupid, but it's so annoying. <laughs> but I want you guys to know that I'm grateful just to be here on this freaking stream, to have the opportunity to give you guys your power back, to give you guys, I, I'll never forget, I had a subscriber who said, I, I'm, I have no energy. He said, I'm lucky if I even get out of bed throughout the day. He was so depressed. And it's like, how do you have time to be depressed when you can create action at literally any moment? And he said, thanks for the, he said, thanks for that. And I was like, wow. And if you guys become better than me and move up in life and do all those things, that means that I've done my job because we all help each other out. We all lift each other up. I know guys are very competitive and they get very competitive when it comes to chicks in the West and all this, and they start infighting and they get jealous. But look guys, that's not the way it is worldwide. I want you guys to know that there's plenty of opportunities to go around. 
Now, there will always be jealous men. There will always be haters and all that stuff. That's part of the, you know, once you guys get on social media or you start uh, expanding, you'll realize there will always be jealous men out to, to get you. But look, guys, the vast majority are not going to do that because you're going to find people of your own legion. <laughs> You're going to find other legionnaires. Other legionnaires are going to be attracted to what you're doing. You're going to make friends who see the positivity around you. Not all of life is positive, but you can surround yourself with positive people. And that's why I get away from some of, the, from some of that silliness. See, because you hear it all the time from the AWs, from American women. They go, oh, everything's positive. Everything's po No, it's not, dummy. What are you talking about? You have to deal with problems every day. And this is why they're losing, man. This is why they don't have options. You guys think they have all these options. They don't. We have the options. We have the options to upgrade. We have the options to take power. We have the options to use power. The only reason AWs have any options at all is because simps allow it. If you guys really think about it, the only reason AWs have any type of power or options at all is because simps allow it. That's pretty much it. Simps allow them to fail. Simps allow them to make all these stupid mistakes that are completely avoidable. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> it's insane. Oh, my Lord. Today is more about reflection. Today is more about get, taking our power and doing what we want to do. <laughs> a woman looks at her phone in the West and thinks she has all these options. A woman looks at her phone in the West. Oh, there's a little beetle down there. There's a black beetle. There's big beetles at the beach for some reason. I, I don't know. I don't know how they get so big, but... A woman in the West looks at her phone and thinks she has all these options. She starts scrolling and thinks she is in command. Gentlemen, that's all virtual. That has nothing to do with the real world. Because in all reality, what do guys value in life? Guys value money, freedom, peace and quiet. And what do women value? They value attention. Guys, they don't value money like you think they do. Who cares? You, you want to know what's sad? You want to know, guys, you really, really want to know the truth? Women think in the West that attraction is symmetrical, right? They think if they have a career, they think if they have money, they think if they have all this freedom, that somehow this is going to translate into them having a guy, right? You hear the Wanisphere guys always talking about this. Well, they, they got part of the, the equation right. But what they don't understand is that the ladies think in the West that if they get all these things, they're gonna get a better guy. That it's actually gonna increase their options. You see, you see where you see where I'm going with this? They think if they have all these things, that it actually increases their options when it, when in reality it does the exact opposite. Do you see what I'm saying? Everything revolves around them getting your guys' attention. Everything that they do, literally everything that they do, revolves around them getting your guys' attention, taking your attention, cultivating your attention. Isn't that crazy? Literally everything that they do, every little thing that they do, is about getting your attention. Man, I'm getting hungry. After the stream, I'm going to be eating, baby. You know what I made last night, guys? I made some bulgogi beef with chopped vegetables, um, some rice, and a little fried egg on top. So it was essentially bim bim bap. And then I sliced uh, some beets and some carrots. And it had like peppers in it. It had peppers in it, and it had... What else did it have? It had... Uh, what the hell did I put in there? Some diced onions. Oh, man, it was good. Let me tell you guys, it was delicious. So freaking good. A little bit of um, 
uh, soy sauce with cornstarch to thicken it up and some brown sugar. Oh man, dude, guys, it was, that was freaking bomb, man. With a nice little sunny side up fried egg on top. Oh, <laughs> you guys are like, what are you, what are you talking about cooking it? My point is, you got the options, guys. You got the options. I'm proud of this guy taking his girl out. Look at her, man. She's staying in shape, man. Nothing but respect. I'm proud of these two. Keep it, keep it in shape. I saw them way back there. He's keeping his girl in shape, man. <laughs> and if you notice, I don't know if you guys can see that, but while they were running, he's ahead of her. He's leading. Guys, that's how it is. I don't care what the little ladies say. We got the power, baby. Anyway, I made some bulgogi yesterday. I made some badass pancakes. A little bit of buckwheat, a little bit of buttermilk, some wheat germ. Oh, yeah, guys, I love to cook, man. Cooking is the one area where you can really control your nutrition and just make things that are delicious. I put some cane sugar in there, a little bit of raw cane sugar. I know you guys, oh, I don't need sugar. Guys, if you're going to burn it off, you know... It's like, I, I love how guys say no sugar. Well, how are you supposed to avoid sugar? It, that makes no sense. Everything gets broken down. Everything turns into glucose, glycogen. What the hell? Freaking big ass, big ass seagulls. Oh no, those are, uh, what are they, uh, pelicans. So yeah, I made a little bit of a bulgogi. Oh man, and I chopped up some kale, some nice diced greens in there came out so good i literally put like every vegetable you can imagine in that thing it was crazy it's crazy it's delicious yeah guys if you ever want to make a like a teriyaki sauce what you do is you thicken it up with cornstarch that's how you do it gets that nice thick delicious uh sauce flavor in there and then i put a little bit of peppers in there oh yeah it's korean style but yeah, we've got the options. We got the options to cook. And by the way, yes, I cook better than <laughs> most of the little ladies that you meet in life. I cook better than them. <laughs> I've only met a couple of women in my entire life that could cook be better than me. I'm not, I'm not even bragging. I'm <laughs> we have the options to make what we want. You know what? Now nah, we'll just keep going. Now nah, I want to go up. Now nah, I want to go down. Now I want to go up. Now I want to go down. But I could take that big... You know, I'm going to take that big ramp. There's a big ramp over there. I'm going to take that. we got the options, guys. We command the power. Oh, yeah, guys. Beef bulgogi. Oh, and I also put some wild boar in there. It was so good. Joseph Ann says, hey, Paul, hope all is well, brother. Just tapping in. Appreciate that. Joseph Ann, appreciate all your guys' likes. Appreciate the likes. You have no idea. Thank you for the likes. The likes are what keep us going over here. Make us great. Go ahead and hit that like button. Oh, yeah. For some reason, I can't see likes on, the, on this streaming software. That's the one thing I don't like about this software. It doesn't make any sense. How come you can't see likes? But it's fine. It is what it is. As long as you guys pop in a couple likes every now and then. My legs. My legs are about 30% crippled. I think I'm going to hit legs today anyway, though. But yeah, guys. Beef bulgogi. Delicious. Love that stuff. Very Korean. Oh, yeah. Put a little sesame seeds on top. You're off to the races, man. So good. It's freaking great. What the hell? Uh, I think we got some protesters out here or something. This is bizarre. Uh, what the hell? Okay. This is, this is getting weird. You hear that? <laughs> freaking protesters. I don't know what the hell they're protesting. Who cares? Anyway. Ah, once you guys realize that you're in control, that you've got the options, all of a sudden, your life starts to morph. It starts to become something 
bigger than you ever thought it would be. You start to take your control, you start to take your power, you start to realize, hey, I got all the options, baby. That I'm in command, and the little ladies aren't. They don't have as much power as you guys think they do. You don't, they don't have as many options as you think they do. Their options are very limited. Women's options are actually so limited that after about the age of six... Now, I know... Look, calm down, ladies. I know I'm going to get emails about this crap. Your options are severely limited as you age. Right? So earlier we talked about how ladies... <laughs> They think they've got options. They're told that they have options. They go online, they think they have options. But in all reality, everything that they do is so that they can get attention from you guys, that they can get a validation and attention from you guys. Now, if they work on their career, are they getting attention and validation? No. If they get their money right, or even get any money, does that increase their validation and attention? No, it doesn't. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> They, guys, their options are very limited because what most men fail to realize is that they want the attention and validation of the first guy that they were with. They want their, the guy who took their virginity. They want his attention and validation and they never secured it. So what happens now they're forever seeking and searching and confused and upset and worried and nervous i'll never forget the first girl that i was ever with she was a virgin and i was a virgin shout out to her her name starts with a j she, i think she lives in australia now she's married or i don't know if she's divorced i checked like i don't know how many years ago but she was married at the time i think she became like a politician anyway Oh man, this hill's gonna kill me. I'm running out of energy here. I gotta go get some food. I didn't have a. I had a big a medium breakfast. I should have had a bigger one, but anyway. I'll never forget. She, we hooked up, and then it was like afterwards, she was trying to get my validation and attention, right? And unfortunately. She just was more of a hookup, right? And so, after that, it was just sad. <laughs> because she was still trying to get my attention and validation about a year or two later. And this didn't work. I don't remember, were we boyfriend and girlfriend? I can't even remember, guys. It was so long ago. I was like 15. That was almost 30 years ago. But it's sad because that, of course, left a negative impression upon her. I'm not saying we should feel sorry for them, but their lives after that, as they have more and more guys, more rack up a higher body count, this destroys them mentally. Because essentially, they're not able to secure any man's validation or attention for a long time. Because guys really, what they do is they don't understand how much validation and attention means to ladies. It kills them if they don't get it. It makes them sad. It makes them depressed, lonely. And that's why so many women now are so sad and on so many different head meds. How come they need headmans now more than ever? They never needed headmans. You want to know what's funny? Whenever I talked to my mother, she was from a, the baby boomer generation early. She's always happy. Whenever I would talk to my grandma, they're always happy. My aunts, for the most part, they're always smiling. Start the day off with a smile. I was thinking about this the other day and I was like, that's not how the little ladies do it today. They don't start their day off with a smile. They start their day off with stress, anxiety, scrolling on their phone. And it's because they have the pressure to be men, guys. You know what I mean? I'm not saying you should feel sorry for them. What I'm getting at is, this is how things have changed 
over the years and how they've actually decreased the options that they do have by being so much like us. It's a crazy stream today, huh? <laughs> I'm going over so much today, it's not even funny. Hit that like button when you guys get an opportunity. I really appreciate that. But yeah, I mean, pfft, yikes. So yeah, the first girl I was with, I'll never forget, she was trying to get my validation and attention for a long time. And I was like, nah, dude, you're just like maybe an LA4. She wasn't like hideous, but she wasn't, she wasn't that pretty, right? So anyway, whoosh. Uh, the options are within our, within our control. The, um, what is it again? Internal locus of control, <laughs> external locus of control. Man, I should have ate more before the stream. <laughs> I should have ate something before the stream, but my brain's tired. My fault. But yeah, this is the direction we're going when it comes to AWs, when it comes to our options. We got them, guys. We got them right where we want them. I know this isn't necessarily going to be a very popular stream, but I want you guys to know. But as long as you stay on your purpose, as long as you commit it out loud that everything that happens in your life is because of you and that everything that happens thereafter is because of you, you're going to be okay. Now, look, if you have been through some stuff, which we all have, we've all been down, we've all gone through struggles, we've all gone through horrendous stuff to make it this far in life. Not that stuff happened to you. Maybe you were a kid and you went through a bunch of crap. That's fine. There was nothing you could do to, to stop it at the time. There was nothing you could do at that moment. But everything after that, the effects of that are all within your control. Dealing with all the stuff that you went through. That's under your control. And that's really what I'm getting at. Is you guys have so much more, more opportunity than you could ever imagine. And once you really understand that, my, you won't be having any midlife crises. You won't think, be ever think about deleting. You won't be depressed. You'll start to realize that, hey, I'm an ugly guy, so what? Or maybe I'm short. Or maybe I don't have the six sixes. I don't even have one six. All those things won't matter anymore. None of those things are going to matter. What's really going to matter is your quality of life. Your gratitude. Your internal locus of control. You're going to realize that it's not about dressing really nice like Kevin Samuels used to say, he used to say that you need to dress up and do it. I know where he's coming from, image and all that. I, I get it, but a lot of these things aren't necessary, guys. What really matters is you're doing it for yourself and that you're on your purpose. That, you're, that you've got a purpose. That you understand that you have a bunch of things. And maybe you're antisocial. Maybe you're withdrawn from society. Maybe you believe certain things about yourself. Maybe you're mad. Maybe you're pissed off at yourself. Maybe you're maybe you've got maybe you don't believe in yourself. Maybe you can't give yourself any type of praise. Maybe you can't accept praise. There's certain things that you want out of life. There's certain things you don't like about yourself. Those are the things that are going to give you the biggest opportunities. I know it sounds crazy, but as we talked before about your height, maybe you're, maybe you're a shorter dude and you believe that this limits you or that this is an embarrassment. Well, in all reality, it's actually your opportunity. It's your opportunity to shine. It's your opportunity to take back the control. Just like, like, for example, Kevin Hart, he's five foot two. 
He makes fun of his height all the time. He doesn't let that control him. He doesn't let these possibly... He could have used it as a crutch. He could have said, I can't do anything because I'm short. And I'm just using him as an example, but he used it as an opportunity. And that's what I'm really getting at, guys. Your insecurities are actually your opportunities. Your detractors, the things that you believe hold you back, are actually your opportunities. Guys, my pain, the things I've been through, were actually my opportunities. This is going to sound complete. I went through, I'm just, I'm being dead serious with you guys. When I was a kid, I went through horrendous, horrible, uh, let's just say sexual, um, I can't really, ab, one, two, three, four, use. When I was a kid. Okay. I went through that as a kid and I didn't even find out until I was almost 40. Right? But when I found out, guys, and I went back and I went, oh my God, you know, I remembered all the stuff. It didn't stop me at all. I know this may sound crazy. And by the way, I don't use it as a crutch at all. Not at all. In fact, it was actually my shining moment because I realized at that moment, I was like, wow, that's the worst that happened to me. <laughs> that's the worst is that the worst life has to throw? God, yeah, it was pretty bad, guys. But <laughs> I told my family, and my family was very upset. But I didn't tell them to get sympathy or anything. I just wanted them to know the reason why I'd been so sad and upset all these years is because that's what I went through as a kid. And it, was not, it had nothing to do with them, and they, they were frustrated. They were upset. But it had nothing to do with it. Not, not one little bit. You see what I'm saying? What I'm getting at is, that's when I was like, I really have complete control over what's happening. And nobody can use it against me. Nobody. You see what I mean? And it's something that I had suppressed for years. Do you know what I mean? It was my, it was my, it was my, <laughs> I got a fan. <laughs> it was my opportunity. <laughs> and I just want you guys to know, it doesn't matter how bad it gets. It doesn't matter. There's so much opportunity. That's when I started to believe. That's when I really realized that I don't hate myself. You see what I'm saying, guys? There's a lot of guys out there that have a lot of self-hatred. There's a lot of guys out there that have a lot of internalized pain. And in all reality, that's your biggest opportunity. The things you don't like about yourself, your voice, your face, whatever. I don't know. Maybe you got a scar on your, whatever. Your nose. These are all opportunities, guys. And I'm not going to give you that whole, you need to love yourself, mumbo jumbo. What I'm getting at is, at the very least, being able to live with yourself, who you are. And if you do end up loving who you are and embracing who you are, my God, guys, the opportunities just start to come at you so fast. And all of a sudden, people want to hang out with you. People want to be buddies with you. People want to be friends with you. All of a sudden, you have all these, all this positivity coming at you. It's just incredible, guys. And all of a sudden, now you're free. You have all this freedom in your mind. Anyway, I just wanted you guys to know that no matter how bad it gets, I've been there with you. And I've been there way low. I mean, we're talking, you know, 
childhood trauma times infinity. And yet at the end of the day, there's nothing I could do about all that crap that happened back then, but I can affect change for myself, for my friends, for my legionnaires out there for the rest of my life. Just saying. So I just want you guys to know <laughs> that it's not all depression, that it's not all gloom, it's not all terror. No matter what you've been through in this life, you can turn it around at any moment. And to my AWs out there, to my American girls out there who complain to me, who send me emails, you can do it too. You can do it at any moment in time. You can turn it around. You can make it happen. Actually take back that. You, you would not even know. You would think I needed to be. You would be surprised that I'm not in a mental institute. <laughs> if I told you that, you would be like, bro, what? You need serious help. Again, gentlemen. I've worked through all that stuff. All the pain. So I want you guys to know that no, it, 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 you don't have to go through all that <laughs> to make it. What I'm getting at is no matter what you've been through, you can turn it around at any moment. And it's just, it's, whew, life is fleeting. <laughs> take those opportunities. Take those opportunities. Any opportunity, all the opportunities. And if there's anything you get from this channel, I want you guys to know that if you make that I am India, I don't care if you're in Belgium, the little lady's grief on this channel. <laughs> I'm with you a thousand percent. I'm all about accountability. I'm all about making fun, having a good time. I want you guys to know I got your back. Man, woman, I don't care who you are. If you're accountable, if you hold yourself accountable, if you can laugh at your pain, if you can do it, I'm with you. So don't ever forget that. Hit the like button on the way out. Hit the notification bell. Subscribe. I really appreciate all of my legionnaires. All my legionnaires. Whew. Good stream today. Maybe not as popular, but definitely a good stream. Until next time. Oh, and special shout out to all the people who donated. I really, really appreciate it. And what was the last? Is there anything else? That's pretty much it. Until next time. Definitely watching. Yes. So let's get to it. <laughs>